All right, guys, is everybody ready? Welcome to another version of Petty Cab Info Wars. Tonight, we are going to have an official debate. We have Travis Duncan, who has so kindly got out of his bed, put his warm dinner down, and came to debate the other mayor candidate, Alex Stringer. The rules are they get 90 seconds to answer each question. Anybody who would like to ask a question, that's what we're going to answer. We don't have anything set up. This is going to be on the fly. Mario is going to be the official timekeeper. He needs to drink a whiskey first. Look at him. Get it, boy. Get it. You better keep that time. Yes. Who would like to ask the first question to these mayoral candidates? Anybody? Okay. We have Omar. Tell us your name and tell us what the question is. All right. This is Omar Bahamadan. I need to hear a uh, very big crowd cheering. Let's hear it! Thank you, thank you. What's going to happen with the dome around Austin? We have 90 seconds to answer this. We're going to start with Mr. Dome, Alex Stringer. You know, this is a great question. I'm very glad you asked. When we build the dome around Austin and get rid of the Californians, not only is Austin going to be more affordable, not only is traffic going to drop to a sustainable level, but we are going to regulate the negative effects of climate change because every day is going to be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Our dome is going to be a solar-powered dome made from locally grown material. And best of all, it is going to be a rainbow dome because nobody, and I mean nobody, loves the LGBTQ more than me. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. So, I just want to first say it's an honor to be here with all of you. My name is Travis Duncan. Our website is called wearethemayor.com. Thank you. So, so Omar, to your question, it's a very interesting question, and actually what it makes me think of is the idea of resiliency and climate resiliency. As things shift in the world, we need to be resilient in our mind, body, and spirit. And if we look into ancient history, it's really interesting because some of the stone structures may have alluded to the fact that we were using energy fields on this planet in ways that we quite don't understand right now. So it makes me think of, when, when you ask about the dome, it makes me think about resiliency and how we're going to come together and cooperate. So, uh, and, and I always told Alex that um, if the climate gets crazy, we might need the dome. So it's, it's also good brand new. So, thank you, Omar. Alright guys, who else wants a question? Come on. Tell us your name and tell us a question. My name is Alfredo. My, my name is Alfredo, and uh, my question is a simple one. Uh, what would be your first act as mayor of Austin? Travis, it's your turn. So the very th first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a system of open source transparency. So literally everything that I do every single time is going to be live streamed. And then we're going to do 100 days of town halls like this. This could be a town hall where literally we bring our, our policy experts and we're generating policy from you. So it's literally people-generated policy. That's why the first 100 days is all town halls, right? Because we're actually listening to people with the lived experience. So it's like we don't need to be hobnobbing with the bureaucrats in the Chamber of Commerce. What we need to be doing is listening to the people in like 12 hours long, like we'll eat while we're listening. So that, listen, is the first thing that I'll do. So, aside from withdrawing, aside from formally withdrawing our Amazon application, when I get elected mayor, I plan on expanding our police department. Right now we have an epidemic of Lyme scooter operators. Blatantly disregarding the rules of the road. They run through red lights, they drive on the sidewalks, and 95.3% of them are drunk. 
while driving their vehicle. And that's why we are going to create a new branch of the police department, and we're going to call it Scooter Force. Thank you. All right, guys. You have just tuned in to another version of Petty Cap and Full Wars. We got Travis Duncan and Alex Stringer. They're running for mayor. We have one question here. Tell us your name and what's your question. My name is Porter. All right. How do you intend to incentivize lowering property taxes? Because that's what's driving rents up. If you intend to change something about the raising rents in Austin, Texas, and how hard it is for lower income workers and people of all sorts and all backgrounds, how do you intend to change that? Because what's driving rents up is property taxes. And we all know what's driving property taxes up because businesses are coming in and they're investing in properties. Kill down the Californians! Yeah. Yeah. Alex Trainer, it's your turn to answer the question first. Are you ready? You ready? <laughs> Yeah, I'm very glad you brought this up because our property tax costs and our affordability concerns are the central, are one of the central components towards my campaign. And, you know, Porter, aside from building a dome around Austin and giving flamethrowers to our police, I have other alternative solutions to create a more affordable Austin, such as... I have other affordable solutions. Let me, let me finish what I'm saying such as holding our developers accountable for actually building the number of affordable housing units that they promised to build when they, open, when they create a multi-use facility. Also, we do not need to use city-owned land to fund a major league soccer team that refuses to pay property taxes. Well, I'm going to put it to you this way. The Trumpian business deals conducted by selfish Steve Adler and our corrupt administration are the reason that we are plunging into an unaffordability crisis at an exacerbated rate. So I'm going to tell you this, Porter. I'm going to say it very loud and very clear. I'm going to say it very loud and I'm going to say it very clear. Not only are we going to make our developers pay their share of property taxes, not only are we going to do that, but we are going to make them to build their share of uh, 30 to 50 percent MFI units, and that they refuse, we are going to double the density bonus fee. Thank you. So, Porter, thank you for the question. When we, when we. Consider taxes, we have to understand that it's a fundamentally extractive revenue source. So the long-term goal always is to build a society with maximum social services that doesn't require the need for taxation. We just have to keep that in mind long-term. However, we have taxes now, we use them now. So the, the property tax issue is when we shift from a building tax, to we eliminate the building tax and go straight to a land use tax. Then living, being a residence, there's not commercial value associated with that. So you shift the, the property tax burden to what the land is being used for. So it more proportionately uh, is allocated from, you know, it's just more proportional. So you have somebody that's living in their house for, you know, since the 1970s, and it hasn't changed since the 1970s, and they're being taxed as if it's some multi-million dollar property. That's insane, because their use hasn't changed at all. So this is one, one option. Somebody else said that you can, by the way, we have to work with the state, the county, and, you know, and the city. We have to have cooperation. This is why the blind partisanship, the insanity when we're, we're trying to d divide and conquer, essentially is what we're talking about. Divide and conquer is the reason why they don't get anything done with the state. Because they want us to be against each other. They want us to pick a side, and they want to create that perception, right? They're in cahoots, so they can keep developing. What are you talking about? It's just a development mafia. And it's, what we're saying is that we're not against development, but let's incentivize regenerative development. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Good Woo! Good 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 yeah. Guys, good we have another question here for Petty Cap Info Wars. <laughs> Tell us your name and what's your question. Yeah, Julian. I'm Julian. Yeah. Yeah. And my question, my question is, what are you guys going to do about TechStock? More specific. Travis Duncan. Let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. Okay. Hold on. Uh, so they're 
charging way too much on tools and the late fees is where they really get you. I think we can all agree. It's that! Yeah, Textile is pretty evil and they're a corporation I would like to see out of Texas. Wait, can you say that again? Uh, yeah. Text dot. So one of our most sovereign rights as human beings is freedom of mobility, the freedom to roam, right? And by, by taxing our roads, it's, it's totally against that, that fundamental sovereign free principle. And this is again another example of extraction. And we're hearing that you know the Saudis are even invested in our roads. They're taking money out of Austin to other places because they're taxing us because we just gave them the right to bamboozle us and build the road. We can build our road. Yeah. So tolls. So text dot. Here's the deal. We need to co cooperate with these institutions if we're to find a transition to a better way. So again, this goes back to the state because they're asserting that they have the right to dictate how we address mobility in our city. And I'm asserting that based on our fundamental constitutional right, based on our sovereign right as a city, we have the right to dictate how we do mobility in this city. And it has to be full sovereignty consensus. So the, the goal ultimately is to build a, a public transportation system that is free to all the public. And maybe, 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 maybe it's just tourists pay the tickets, and that's how it kind of subsidizes the maintenance costs. And when you when you use renewable energy, actually, uh, it's, it's technically free. And, and there, we have we have incredible solutions. Uh, to, we're, we're going it's right, right. So it's it's the people's road. It's the people's road. We're paying for these roads, and they're they're playing these games and shifting the money around and saying, oh, we don't have enough. So anyway, thank you for the question. You know, uh, it's a very guys. It's a very this is a very very difficult question to really honestly answer because TechStop it's a state organization, and as a local official, there's only so much power I have in terms of making decisions on behalf of the state. So I'm going to say this. We as individuals need to foster a culture of self-accountability and proactive behavior. We need to realize our power as individuals and we need our school systems to do a better job of educating our children and teaching them to be free thinking and happy, positive, well thought out, well spoken individuals and that is why, unrelated to TechStop but related to everything we've been talking about, I'm going to create an item where we give alpha brain to all of the school children here in Austin so that they can optimize their cognitive abilities and help protest and address the bureaucratic injustices of the state. Is there anybody over here on this side? We got a question right here. You're live on Pen Cabin Falls. Um, uh, do, do, do you think that the people will never be free until the last bureaucrat is hung by the entrails of the last bourgeoisie? That's a strong question. Yeah, it's a strong question. You ready to answer this question, boy? The answer is yes. Thank you. Right. So, uh, I'm not gonna lie, that's a, that was a pretty crazy question. And while, I, while I am a strong proponent of nonviolence, I am also an equally strong proponent. Hey, I am also an equally strong proponent of utilizing and exercising your Second Amendment rights. Thank you. So, so that that question makes me think of the resentment that the masses have for the oligarchs, the nefarious entity that the, we call they, that we never can really place who they are. And if we remind ourselves about the quantum realm and quantum physics and how actually the way we think and speak and act can physically change the dynamic on earth. When we hold resentment and fear and anger and violent thoughts to them, then that causes a posture in them that is more attacking toward us. So if we are, if we just forget that they even exist, 
and we focus on building the new system, we have the abundance where we can thrive. We don't need their money, we don't need their castles or their yachts or any of that stuff. What we need is to cooperate and unite and actually assert that we have the right to be free. Tell us your name, what's your question? All right, guys, here we go. Here's the next question. Let's have a little silence. Hey, the march! Woo! Hi, So, I'm a little bit of, I have some more of an unusual question. But, uh, one of the issues that I take most with the mayors and people running is the idea of absolute certainty. And so, let's say your tax incentives don't work. I value more than you can I don't, I don't really care what you promise. I care more about what you can actually if you don't prove to do what you say you're going to do, and you actually attract and change your mind. Well, repeat the question. So the question, if I'm hearing you right, is essentially, if if we're wrong, can we admit it and be open-minded to a new solution? Right? That's the question. So the app, the answer is absolutely yes. And really, from my perspective, when somebody says something that we might tend to disagree with, that makes me want to listen deeper to say, what do you know that I don't know? If the, the craziest thing that you say to me, I, I, I'm going like this, because I want to know I want to know what you're talking about. What do you know that I don't know? And, and the, the thing is that we really need, if we're gonna find solutions, we have to be able to listen. And that's one of the things, actually, about City Hall that we notice, is they pretend like everything's okay, they pretend like they haven't screwed things up, and they're, they're, they're blindly loyal to digging themselves into that hole of lies. And so really, full transparency is being able to say, I was wrong, I messed up, I don't know. And, and I, I take that posture now, and sometimes I do get in the habit of speaking in absolutes, and, and, and I, I acknowledge that, I can speak in absolutes, but really it's because I just have confidence that together we can find solutions. That, that's the absolute that I am sure of, is that when we do work together, when we have an open mind, when we don't think, take things personally, when we don't have an ego about it, then we can actually find the solutions that work for everybody. Thank you. Thank you for that question. That's a really important question. You know, uh, I want to extrapolate on what Travis just said. And I want to say that I'm the most transparent candidate, not only in this mayor race, but in the history of Austin politics. And I'm going to tell you this. There is nothing more transparent than promising to build a dome around Austin and the flamethrowers to our police. I am going to add to that. I've had conversations with a lot of you guys, and there have been plenty of occasions in which I have been wrong. Isn't that correct? Show of hands. And when I was wrong, how quick was I to admit being wrong? And man, that transparency is going to follow me into City Hall. Alright guys, here on, we have another question. Come over here because the mic cord isn't long enough. This petty cat is the worst, guys. Tell us your name and what's your question. Hold on guys, hold on. Hey guys, let's, hey, let's give her a little respect. Let's give her some respect. Your campaign is built uh, on building a dome. I would like to ask where you are from yourself. We have 90 seconds. 
You ready? Hey, Shasa, thank you. Um, Shasa, Shasa, thank you very much for asking this great question. And I'm gonna say, I am from New York City, but I'm gonna tell you this. Not all transplants are created equal. Well, I, I, uh, I actually do believe that whether you've been here a day or a hundred years, you're equally as valuable. And, and I, I, I appreciate that picture. No, I, I love, I, I really think everybody who's here, home, the only moment is now, right? The only moment we ever have is right now. And so we're all home because our heart is right here. So I, I really believe that all people are important. And the Austin, Austin does get into a habit of sometimes of being like, you know, I've been here longer, so I know better. Where are you and from? I'm, so I'm from Dallas originally. I was born and raised in Dallas. I've had family here my whole life. My, my family's been in Texas for nearly 200 years. Uh, not that that entitles me to anything. It, it doesn't, but I, I'm just, it's just, I know Texas, I'm from Texas. If that matters to you, I don't know. I think everybody matters, like I said, and, um, people who have been here whatever. So, thank you for the question. I'd like, guys, I'd like, I'd like to just add to that. For, uh, I'd, I'd like to add to what Travis just said. And uh, my campaign and my platform is based on love and inclusivity. And everyone is welcome in Austin, except the Californians. <laughs> All right, I promise this guy a question. Welcome to Pedicab Info Wars. What's your question? What's your name? It's fun that we joke about Alex Jones, but it is important that we talk about free speech on these platforms, on the Facebook and the Twitter. There, it matters so much. People are being deplatformed. And you have to think about the future. Yeah, for real. Cut the Alex Jones shit out. I, I, I would like to. I have the propos. I have the, the Electronic House of Citizens will check the Senate and they will check the uh, House of Representatives. You will log in. Everyone will vote in the future. This is. I'm thinking far ahead. Ask a question. My question is, what do you think about the censorship about Facebook and Twitter, etc. Et et I've had a few drinks, so I don't remember who went first last. So, you, what you're talking about is really important because you're talking about essentially freedom of information, freedom of internet. And, 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 and uh, you know, uh, actually, the decentralized platforms that are built on the blockchain and the hollow chain, this is where things are moving. And this is important that it does move that way. That's why also internet sovereignty is important. So we can actually build our own towers and stop being charged and limited on what we can access, right? So you also were touching on kind of a, a platform of like being engaged and like voting and, and we're actually already building an app where every day you can log on and city council is making decisions today, Congress is making decisions today, you're making input on the policy every single day. So we're open sourcing the, the solutions. So it's an open source solutions platform. So that the platforms are going to be really important in how we make decisions in our society. Uh, and then also uh, on the decentralized platforms that cannot be censored. You know, on, on for example, DTube, it's decentralized YouTube. On DTube, you can't get taken down. Google cannot take your videos down. You vote on the blockchain. Yeah, voting on the blockchain. They're already doing this in. Uh, uh, Cote or Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, they already did elections on the blockchain. So, thank you. Thank you. I gotta go.
Okay, so, when it comes to Alex Jones, that man has been keeping Austin weird longer than 85% of the individuals have lived in Austin. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna elaborate on that. And my thing about that, my thing about that is that regardless of whether or not you agree with Alex Jones, regardless of any of that, the fact remains, the fact remains that we need to do whatever we can to not perpetuate censorship. I'm running the most progressive campaign in history, and our corrupt establishment and bloodthirsty media is doing whatever they can to silence me. And I'm going to tell you this, that is not happening. And when I get elected, I mentioned this earlier and I'm going to say it again, no more. Guys, this is a version of Pedicab Infowars. We have one more song, I promise. Question. Let's hear the last question. Guys, we thank you for coming out and participating in this debate. Tell us your name and what's your question. If we can get a little silence in here. We can get some silence! Shut the fuck up! Okay, so my question is... Um, I have two questions. One question is... So, um, who... Um, it's because they suck. Just kidding. Shut the hell up! I would like to say, um, I have no idea how like someone can come openly and to my face. I have no idea how someone can come up to my face and apologize for Alex Jones bullshit and say that it's okay to be Alex Jones because he's a racist piece of shit. So all I get from you is that you're a racist piece of shit as well. And what I've heard tonight is that white people don't give a fuck about what brown people experience every fucking day. And if you're white, you just shut the fuck down, you just sit the fuck down and realize that brown and black people don't have it as good as you fucking do. So we don't get to do these bullshit interviews with the fucking bullshit belt, with the bullshit mayor candidacy, the bullshit suit. You know what? Brown and black people don't get to do this shit, you know what? White people get to bullshit every fucking day, every night and say, you know what? I'm gonna apologize for Alex Jones' fucking racist motherfucking bullshit ass. And I'm gonna sit down and say, I think it's okay. And there's another question, but fuck you for doing this fucking bullshit after the event. You know what? This is an insult to brother and black people everywhere. And you're white, and you're no respectable, and you shouldn't be here. This is fucking bullshit. Fuck all of you for being here for this. This is ridiculous. I was here because this is a bullshit event, and I will never come back. And I know the other pity cameras are fucking don't just shut it out because it is real. We still live with the legacy of fucked up violent colonial slavery in Europe. We still live with the same institutions and actually expressing that truth and listening is very important. So I actually would want to keep having the mic and hearing that because we need to, we need to listen to these things. We need to not shy away from it. And really that's what we're doing here. So that's what, the, that's what the town halls are all about. That's what shining the light on it, live streaming this stuff. So people in Westlake who've gr never grown up experiencing things that other people do can actually see the truth of what goes on on this planet. And we also have to acknowledge that 
one thing about this is that as Americans, we are all complicit in war crimes. The taxes we pay bomb and kill and murder people all around the world every single day. So us exchanging Federal Reserve notes, we all have blood on our hands and we all need to grapple with this truth and the, the other aspect of the history of this country and this system. So the, the first thing I want to really address, and then, hey, the first thing I want to I want to address, and the first statement that I want to make is that I fully support that man's uh, decision and his lifestyle and his choice to wear a dress in public. I think that you can be any gender that you want, and nobody should ever have the right to judge you for who you are and how you express yourself. So I wanted to say that first and foremost. I love any individual who's, who expresses themselves in their own unique way. In regards to Alex Jones, you know, okay, regardless of what you think about him, because I didn't express support or dissent, regardless of that, I do think that people should have a right to express their platform in as free of a way as possible, and I think that a danger that we are facing as a society is that we, are, we tend to love people who don't agree with our modern establishment as racist and white supremacists and neo-Nazis and you know, I, I uh, train at 10 Plan Jiu-Jitsu. I train at 10 Plan Jiu-Jitsu and there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, people there who are of all, you know, racist colors, genders and whatever, right? Yeah! You are crazy! Oh, shit! Hey, you can say to my face after this is over. Alright. Guys, thank you for coming. This is another version of Petty Cat Info Wars. You guys have a good night.